Today we're talking all about irons and how you're going to hit them better. Let's get stuck into the video and find out five tips that are going to help you. Guys, if you want me to be your free golf coach as well, hit that little subscribe button down there. You can tell your mates why you beat them next time. It's because you're a subscriber to Matt Fry Golf. Let's get into tip number one. And we are here on the 11th hole of Warrington Golf Club. So the first tip I want to talk to you about is playing the conditions. And what I mean by that is slopes. As we look up this hole here, we can see that the flag is quite a way above us here now. And the one thing that you've got to take into mind is that when you go to a driving range, you practice off a flat mat onto a flat surface generally. You don't generally find that though when you come out onto the golf course. So we can get a little bit confused because those yardages you're hitting at the golf course off those flat surfaces might not translate when you come out here. For instance, 11th hole here at Warrington Golf Club, the flag I've zapped at 155, but because of how uphill it's playing, it's actually playing close to 163 now. So that's nearly another club that I'm gonna to have to hit. One of the big amateur mistakes is just getting up here and going, ah, that's the yardage, or even looking at here, where we've got the 150 to the middle, but not taking into account the slope. It could be downhill, so it means that it's gonna play less. But what you've gotta do is make sure you're equating for that uphill and downhill, because when you're going uphill, that ball's not gonna run as much. When you're going downhill, that ball is gonna run more. So it might change where you need to land it. So normally, going up to that flag, I would probably hit my eight iron. Today, I'm gonna to hit a little seven iron because what I want to do is make sure I get up beyond the flag. I wanna cover the slope. I don't wanna hit a good shot and just be shy because chances are the ball could start coming back to me if it's on that down slope. So when you're faced with an up slope or a down slope, make sure you factor those things in how much it affects the carry, and then how much it's gonna affect the uh, run of the golf ball when it lands, depending on whether it's up or downhill. So let's go, little seven iron, see if we can get it all the way back towards this flag. And it's down the middle of the green, and I've struck it nicely. And even there, it's only just pitched on the first third of the green and managed to get up. So be aware of those slopes, take them into account and choose the appropriate club. Let's go look at another tip. Tip number two is all to do with rough. We're gonna find rough out on the golf course. It's inevitable. We're not gonna hit every single fairway. But one of the amateur mistakes I see is just thinking that when you do come into scenarios like this, where you've got long rough, patchy rough, wet rough, that it's going to play like you were when you were out on the fairway and that's not the case that lie that we've just seen there i'm 160 yards away is actually not too bad if i found that lie in the rough i'd be pretty happy with that because i would think well there's not much grass there that can get trapped between the golf ball and the club but what I would see a lot of people do would find themselves in a scenario a bit more like this one if I were to just drop that in there and even though it's only about a foot away we see how juicy that is and if I just put the club in here you can see how much grass is in between that golf ball and the club but I see people thinking that it's going to react exactly the same it's not as soon as you get that grass in between the blade and the ball, there's gonna be almost like a cushion effect on that golf ball. You're not gonna get spin, you're not gonna get launch. Ultimately, you're not gonna get the distance you require. So when we see a shot, something like this out of a nice lie, where I could say I can get pretty much all the club onto the golf ball, I'd be pretty happy with this. And I can see that 160, my normal eight iron, it comes out pretty well. I get a good strike, I get a good flight and the ball goes. As where this one, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take some loft now. So I've got 160, but unfortunately because I hit a poor drive, I can't get up towards the flag now. So what I have to do is take something like my pitching wedge here to try and lift it out of the rough there. I've got to sacrifice not getting up the green and think, right, I've got to place it somewhere in the fairway, but I've now got to use my loft to get it up and out of this rough here. So I know that my pitching wedge only goes 135, but what it's gonna do is get me up out of this spot of trouble. And we can see it pops out 
I've taken a big chunk there and even with my pitching wedge, it's only flown about 90 yards because of how much of a cushion that rough plays on the shot. So when you find yourself in amongst all this stuff, don't just grab the club that you would normally hit. Assess that lie, think what it's gonna to do to the flight of the golf ball, then pick the appropriate loft to lift it out and move you back into play. Let's go and take a look at another tip. Tip three and tip four is all to do with yardage and wind. Yardage being a big one, a lot of amateurs really underestimate how far they hit the golf ball, whether it's short, whether it's long. We have one image of that one shot that we hit great with our 7 iron that went 150 that one time, so that is your staple number. Now getting down to the driving range, getting on a launch monitor, whatever it may be, if you can find a way of actually just calculating some yardage, doesn't have to be exact, it could be a frame of five yards that you hit this 7 iron in, 150 to 155, at least then you've got an idea because here on this hole, I've got 152 yards to the flag. So normally a nine iron would do that for me. Nine iron goes 147, so it would give me a little window of five yards to bounce it up. But today I'm gonna to go for my eight iron because I know if I don't quite catch that nine iron, it's not gonna get all the way up there. So what I'm doing is playing a little bit beyond the flag and giving myself the opportunity to get all the way back there. So I pick my eight iron and make my normal golf swing. And actually I've hit that really well and it's down the flag, but do you know what? It's not even made the green. It's actually pitched short of the green by about five or 10 yards, probably five yards there. And the reason for that is underestimating the wind. I did the good thing of knowing my yardages and actually clubbing up. If I would have hit my nine iron, I would have been well short. But what I now need to do is take into account the condition of the wind. So many people think, oh, well, I can only just feel a light flutter down here. But your golf ball, it's getting up in the air. It's getting 30, 40 yards up into the sky. So if you just have a little look around at the top of the trees, maybe look at the clouds, you'll get an idea of how the wind is starting to affect it because there I hit a nice eight iron that goes normally 160 for me, but it's pulled up short of the green, all because as it got in there, it climbed into that wind. So I'm now gonna club up towards my seven iron, which is a 180 club for me. Even though the flag's at 152, it's almost playing about 165, nearly 170. What I can do here is equate for that wind, make a slightly smoother swing so I take a bit of spin off it, but give me enough club to get up to the flag and maybe even a little bit beyond it. So make sure you know your yardages so you can equate for that. And then secondly, actually factor in what the wind will do when you hit your shot. And there, down the same line, going towards the flag. And even there, it's still pulled up a tiny bit shy of the flag, all because I'm not taking into account the wind, how severe it is. So know your yardages is a big one. It takes a little bit of time to do, but you'll be thankful when you're out on the golf course for it. And then secondly, it's as easy as this. Throw up a little bit of grass to figure out which way the wind's going because it's going to have an effect on your golf ball. Let's go and take a look at the fifth and final tip that's going to help you become a better iron player. Fifth and final tip is all about the strike of the iron. It's great knowing how to play on slopes, how to get out of the rough, knowing your yardage and how the wind affects it. But if you're not getting the ball somewhere out of the middle of the face and getting a crisp contact, those things actually don't matter that much because your strikes ultimately what's going to have the true effect on the golf ball. And one big thing that I see, we know that the iron goes nicely up in the air. We know that we want to hit ball then ground first. But what I see is so many times people generally start to hit the ground before the golf ball, all because they're staying on their back foot and they're trying to help the golf ball up in the air. Real simple little thing that I want you to do to start off with, just to try and make sure that you're getting a little bit more connection at the right side of the ball. Take your setup and see that your sternum is placed directly over the cane here or up on the line on my body. And I want you to just do a little simple exercise for me. I want you to just start rocking the golf club for me and just trying to touch the ground. And notice here, I'm actually touching the ground behind the golf club here. 
And that's because as I'm actually making these little swings, I'm actually leaning a little bit this way so I can feel more weight in my back leg. And that means now that I'm bottoming out behind the golf ball. If I just start to feel that I shift the weight towards my front foot, notice that that bottoming out of the golf club is now actually after the line. So then what I want to do is really try and feel as I make a golf swing, my starting move at the top of my downswing is to feel that I really push down this way. So I feel that my left leg for me as a right-handed golfer feels like it's pushing down into the ground. So I would push it down and then I would turn up into it. What I don't want to do is feel that the top of my backswing, I feel the opposite, that I push my right leg down and then try and extend up off that one because that's when I'm gonna get the ground below and before the golf ball and I'm gonna go over the top of it potentially as well. So little exercise to find that feeling starting off with, just little swings, then push into that front side and notice it starting to go there. And then as you bring the golf ball in, your main thought is that even if you just had a rehearsal over the top of the golf ball, we'd be up, push down and forwards, and see now that my sternum has got in front of this club here and in front of the line. Then as I go through, I want to turn my body and rotate and make sure that this back foot is showing backwards towards your playing partners that are stood behind you there. What we don't want to do is not show the sole of the shoe to your playing partners that are stood behind there. We don't want to almost show them the front foot sole. So push in, turn, show them the sole. Even if you have that as your little mantra, push and show the sole to the person behind you. What we're going to see is that we get the right weight shift and we start to see then that we've got the correct Nice little sequence and we get ball, then turf. And a lovely one there, I'm showing the sole. My divot is just after the golf club here and I've got my ball and turf strike. Guys, those are five things that are gonna help you become a better iron player. If you've enjoyed them, hit that subscribe button for me down below, smash that like button. I'll see you in your next lesson.